All right, we're back, and today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Now that you have your face looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. Good news, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below-the-waist grooming products Manscaped is known for. Your significant other will be delighted to see you're covering all the bases. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WITHCG, W-I-T-H-C-G at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code WITHCG. Always use the right tools for the right job with Manscaped. On to the episode, baby. Let's go. All right, we're back on the podcast, and I've been looking forward to having this special gal on the airways with me today. She's a former high-level college D1 athlete and has made a huge impact with her following on TikTok being a mental health advocate. Nat, welcome onto the podcast. You're the best. That was quite the intro. I I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we've been looking forward to talking. This, is a, this has been something I've been looking forward to, too. So what's going on? How you been? I'm fired up to have you on. How are we feeling? I know. We're good. We're, we're ready to dive into it all and just connect about all the real shit. I'm excited about it. That's right. I'm doing great. Just came out of a, a, a sauna plunge sesh, so I feel like I'm a reset new man. You know, you been getting, you've been getting into it. Oh my God. Cold plunge, cold therapy has like changed my life. I, I wish yeah. I had a sauna in my house. I do not, <laughs> but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So good. So healing. the best we can touch on that later on the episode, but yeah, I want to get right into it. So I'd love for you in the beginning of this episode to touch on like the beginning of your journey, kind of all the way up until now, you know, with what you're doing in mental health, helping people and whatnot. I just want you to touch on your story a little bit so people can understand you a bit better. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm like, I, I should I keep it short version, long version? I'll keep it short and medium. That's, that's what I'll keep it with. As long as you want to go. It's fine. Yeah. No, I, so I grew up in a small town in Chicago um, called Glencoe. And I have three older brothers who were all division one athletes. So I was the only girl in a family of boys and just a lot of, a lot of, you know, the high expectation of, achieving and of being an athlete was just kind of part of my family's DNA and so ultimately that led me to commit to play division one soccer um, when I was 14 years old so my freshman year of high school which it's you'd think it's the best day of your life but in a weird way it was it was a double-edged sword because it was so incredible but at the same time it was I was so young I didn't know you know what I wanted to do at that point in my life and you make such a big decision that sets the trajectory of your life and it's just a lot of a lot of pressure and so I think I didn't expect it to be and between you know being in high school I was in kind of a toxic relationship Um, I ended up having two severe concussions as well Um, that really kind of was a start of my mental health struggles. And for the first time, my parents were always like, you were the easiest child. And I'm like, okay, thank you for the past tense. And we love, we love (laughs) to see that. But I was just going through a lot of changes at that time. And just for the first time, really feeling, you know, anxiety and worry and fear of the future and all these things. And it sort of spiraled into control over food. So I fell into an eating disorder that at the time when you're going through it, you don't really realize what's happening. You just kind of are channeling your, your anxiety or your worries into a form of control. And that ultimately followed me to USC, um, which, you know, I, I, I ultimately had to end my career in order to heal. And what I thought was sort of the, the height of my struggle was really just the beginning. You know, I, when I stopped playing soccer, that was, that was a whole another battle that I didn't realize I would have to face. It was complete identity loss of who I am, what, what I like to do without this sport that had really consumed me my whole life. I thought I was going to, you know, go pro or play as long as I could. And that sort of abruptly ended overnight. And I spent, you know, the last eight years between college and post post college just really healing and getting to know myself and understanding what happened and and how 
all of it, all of the shit just hit the fan. And in that, I started posting on TikTok and that's kind of how I fell into the content world, which was never my world. I am not a social media person. Like it just is not my thing, but I was like facing this sort of new challenge in my twenties of continuing the identity, you know, uncovering of figuring out who I am and what I want to do. And I feel like it's something I realized so many people in their twenties struggle with. Um, it's not just life after a sport or it's not just you know life after college it's this period of time where we're really trying to figure out who we are and i essentially started building community around that and with ultimately the goal of helping people navigate their 20s and beyond and just doing it together in community because when i was going through all of it i was so alone it was the amount of loneliness you feel in your struggles was really i feel like um where I want to turn my struggles into my purpose in a sense. Yeah. And it's like interesting because I mean, all you want to do is be able to discover yourself in present 100%. time and in past time too. And, and for you, like what, what did you do for yourself to kind of figure out how you really feel from past and present moments in your life? That is such a great question. I think that something I've realized, especially in this chapter of my life is I, how important finding your voice is and listening to yourself and those little i mean it comes up for everyone i call it your intuition or that like silent whisper that comes up in certain situations or whatever you're in that's kind of talking to you or, or telling you what you need and you either choose to listen or you choose to ignore it push it down and keep moving forward and Mel Robbins talked about this in one of her podcast episodes, but she talks about how that's like the friction. It's like life is like a giant school and it's always trying to teach you something. And when shit isn't working, we feel that friction and we can either look at the friction and learn the lesson or we can try and push it away. But when we push it away, it comes back louder. And so I think for me, you know, going through all of kind of the, the trauma of high school into college and you know, my mental health and my body, it was, all of it, it was me ignoring my voice and kind of pushing it away and, and turning a blind eye. And, and so the healing process was really through therapy, through uncovering more about myself and how I feel about my life and the things I like and, and gain, regaining a sense of self, which I feel like you can lose in the process of growing up. Yeah. I, and I've, I've been really touching on that. And that is the fact that like one-on-one -on -one therapy is one of the most biggest forms of just really understanding yourself. Right. Um, and coming down to, you know, getting down to the, really the bottom of it and, you know, figuring out like why you feel the way you feel. And I think most people have a hard time getting there because it's uncomfortable. I've talked about that. Right. And I think that no one should be hard on themselves if it takes too long to figure out because everyone's on a different timeline. You know, I think people get really hard on themselves these days on like how far, like how long it takes to get there, right? Completely. And it's fucking scary. Like it's scary to look, you know, I think we, it's like when you're younger, you, you're in friend groups, you want to fit in. Everyone's trying to fit some persona of what society wants you to be. And, and, but I think all of us are unique. We all have different wants and needs and desires, but if it doesn't fit within you know, what your friends like or what the people around you like, you, you, that's like abandoning a part of yourself. And so I think it, it's scary to go there a lot of times because what we uncover might be something that might make us reevaluate our friendships, our relationships, our lifestyle. And yeah, I think one-on-one -on -one therapy is amazing. I actually, when I was really struggling, I was in group therapy as well for a mm. period of time. And yeah. that was so powerful for me because yeah. it makes you feel like you know, there's other people going through similar things. That's why I love community so much and think it's like so central to everything. Thank you for bringing that up. That's huge because most yeah. people are afraid to do it individually. So they're like, if they can go with a group where, oh, well, I've been through that too, where you can relate and resonate with all that stuff. It kind of gives you the ability to open up. I love that. Completely. Right. And that's, yeah, completely. Go ahead. And that's, yeah, that's kind of like, I feel like that's sort of what I started doing on TikTok, which initially, like I had no intention of, trying to be like an influencer of any sort I really was trying to like shed light on the things that I feel like we're experiencing but not talking about and I think that that's it's 
proving to be a powerful thing because people they want to be validated in their experience and know like they're Mm -hmm. not the only one going through things and so i think that that's just a huge part of it as well and sometimes you do feel like you are by yourself but we're all not you know and not at all yeah completely and for you to have the courage to go out there and and share your story or the things that you recognize in yourself so that people can be like oh i want to try this i want to try helping myself discover myself right it's huge I want to tell the listeners about how I found you. Okay. I try not to spend a lot of time on my phone each day. You know, I try to have a nice little balance, but I was on TikTok and I did come across <laughs> your, your video. And there was a video that really stood out to me that resonated with my own journey. And it's the fact that it's, a, it's about anxiety. And I thought it was a great video. You got straight to the point. It's the fact that there's a difference between your gut feeling and your anxiety. So I've been in moments in my own romantic relationships where I've gotten burned, I've gotten hurt. And the thing is, when we go into a new relationship, you never want to like bring your baggage into it and then, you know, cause your your other partner to be feeling your pain and stuff. But like, I think that if we can understand the difference between gut feeling and anxiety, that's really big. But you really told me about the placement uh, in the video where it's like, you see it in your throat, you feel it in your throat, you feel it in your chest. And usually that dictates that you have anxiety, right? I want you to kind of describe that video and tell me more about like that. And it resonated with me. So I'm sure it'll resonate with some people listening. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, I feel like it's such a relatable thing, especially in relationships and in all the relationships in our life, not just romantic. It's like, we, we have feelings come up and, you know, or anxieties and it, it lands in our body. But what I learned through, um, his name is Dr. Russell Kennedy. He's like an anxiety expert. And I actually did like a, a Instagram live with him. And I learned so much. He, he talks about how it's all about inner child healing. And so many of us, when you think of anxiety, you think of your thoughts, right? Like your worries, your fears, whatever it is, because we tend to spiral and go down that road. But he talks about how like it, it starts in your body. And he says like, you, a lot of us, feel have a feeling in our body and we immediately go into our mind to try and figure it out because the feeling's uncomfortable, but you're not going to figure it out because the body doesn't lie, but the mind always does a lot of times. And so I found that super interesting. It's like, okay, coming back to where you feel it in your body in a certain situation, in a situation, in a relationship or a friendship or whatever it is, you tend to get that feeling in your throat or that like jitter in your heart. It's different for everyone. But he talks about how rather than immediately going into your mind, come back to your body, feel into it, allow it to flow through you. And that really helps alleviate the, you know, anxious spirals. And it's, it resonated with me a lot as well. So I thought I would, I would share it with my community. I'm glad it resonated with you. That's amazing. Yeah. And it has all to do with the nervous system really too. Right. Which, Completely. which comes along with the triggers that we have that, you know, people might, you know, step on your triggers and it's like not their fault, but it's like, we have to be very self-aware that our nervous system could be out of whack and the fight or flight will kick in. And then it's like, where does it stem from? How can we understand really what it is and how we feel? Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head when you said triggers and fight or flight. Like I, to say my body had been in fight or flight for the last eight years like would be an understatement like I I feel it it's that anxious feeling like you're in a rush but you have nowhere to go and I feel that all the time and so it's something I've really had to work through our number one different practices that really help regulate that which you know meditation I know it's like you know everyone talks about it but it's true it allows you to have that self-awareness and you touched on that as well because when you can see your thoughts as thoughts and not as you and you can have that space that's even millisecond of room between it um it's so powerful i you know cold therapy is super transformative and helpful because Mm -hmm. it activates your parasympathetic nervous system which is essentially what you where you want to be the rest and digest um a lot of times you know different scents like lavender or chamomile things that are calming because that's a really you know your nasal pathway is a quick way to Mm. um, help you calm down but yeah it's a very real struggle that i i you know it's something i work through every day yeah it is and i think i mean 
the cult, like cult therapy I've been passionate about. I've been talking about it for so, so many episodes. I feel like people are probably getting sick of me with the, the subject, but it's really the, 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 one of the best therapies to really calm yourself and to be reset and, and just relax through any day. And I think that all we want is to have like clear thoughts, a clear head. And we want to be connected with our inner peace. And I think totally. that if we can't get there, I just don't want anyone to have to take on any of my anxiety. You know, I think no one deserves that. And it's like being self-aware of that and being reset before you go back into any friendship, family relationship or romantic relationship too, right? Definitely. And I think two things I'll say on that is like, number one, I think it's so important to figure out what works for you. And I think with social media, it makes it really fucking hard because everyone's trying to sell you something or five tips to do this in ways. And it's like, at the end of the day, like there's, those things will be helpful, but you know, if you're someone who hates Pilates and you're forcing yourself to go to Pilates every day, like that's not going to be beneficial for your body or your mind. So it's really about if you hate meditating and sitting still, maybe it's, you have to walk or do things that really work for you. So that's something that's super important to think about. And then the other thing that you were saying about bringing baggage into relationships <laughs> or I think, first of all, that's unavoidable. I, I'm the queen of baggage but I think it's we're we're all humans you know like everyone is working through things we're constant Mm -hmm. work in progress but I think you know you've said it over and over the self-awareness that's so key and so important because relationships in our life are other than the relationship we have with ourselves the relationship with others is the most important you know ones that we'll have in our life so just being able to have a healthier way of of engaging is super important yeah, and I think I I talked to Case Kenny about that too. One of my episodes is the fact that we're never going to really fully heal. So you got just got to be on the same page with your partner and be able totally. to communicate and feel safe in any relationship you're in. You know, totally. I think communication is everything, and yeah. I actually that podcast was amazing. And I think that mm-hmm. like being able to express your needs is yes so important because we all have needs in the relationship, and when they're not met on both sides like that, there can be a lot of friction that comes with that. Right. And, and we're going to get into boundaries too. I think that's another one we'll talk, we'll talk about. That's very yeah. important in relationships. Um, I want to move into a very important subject and that's the attachment theory, attachment styles. And you touch on it a lot on your TikTok page. So I want to dive yeah. into it. There's four different ones. You have the anxious attachment, the avoidant attachment, the what else is there? We have two more, right? The secure attachment, which we all want. And give me the other one. Disorganized. Thank you. Um, the double, the big, the, the it's, double-edged it's sword. Yeah. The double whammy. Um, this is all very important to be self-aware of and to understand because everyone has an attachment style one way or another, right? And I know you've been really diving into it, studying about it. You read the book Attached. We can talk about that too, which I've been reading as well. What have you learned from your own experience with yourself and just these attachments? What can we talk about with all this? Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, the book Attached is amazing. And just knowing your attachment style in relationships is so unbelievably fucking important, whether it's romantic or friendships or with your family. It's how we relate to other human beings. And it stems from, you know, early childhood the way that we were nurtured or the way that our caretakers um took care of us so if you were in a dynamic that you know your parents were either super busy or they couldn't show up for you you likely have an anxious attachment which is a fear of abandonment a fear of being left you know if you had a parent that was like a helicopter parent or overly involved in your life and you might have you know an avoidant where you're like, oh, like get away from me. I need space. And the disorganized is the combination of both. So it's the, I love you. Get away from me. I want your attention. I don't want your attention. And that might have come from having one parent who was kind of more avoidant and one who was more anxious. And the secure is someone who's has a really strong sense of self. And I think one of the most interesting things that I learned about Um, attachment styles is we act in ways that fulfill the prophecy of our greatest fears and so it's this idea of like I might you might meet someone and because you already have this idea and this attachment issue you project it you're like oh my god like if you're an avoidant you're like get away from me I already don't like this person they're going to give me the ick or 
if you're anxious, you're like, they're going to leave me, but you don't allow the room for that person to even prove to you like who they are. And so we end up self-sabotaging a lot of times. And I think that's super, super interesting, you know, when it comes to all the relationships in our life. No, definitely. I, I think everyone goes through this stuff and it's like, sometimes it's hard to talk about. It really is. People don't want to talk about it at all, but I want to. I think it's great. We should all relate. I've had an anxious attachment style. I've talked about this before. And it does stem from your childhood, I think, from the experiences we go through, past relationships where we've been hurt, right? And the most important thing, I think, like I've said, is one-on-one therapy to understand it and to move into a secure one. You know, having an anxious attachment style, I want to list some of the things that I've learned about it. That I, I really related on. So it's a fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, depending on a partner for validation and emotional regulation, and there's codependent tendencies. So what I've learned for myself is this. If we can't get to the root of it and really love ourselves and have that relationship, one-on-one relationship with ourselves to where we yeah. feel good enough, where we don't need that validation, we don't need to feel good from someone else, we'll never get, get to, the, to the end of the tunnel. We really won't, right? And I think that mm-hmm. there's, very, there's a lot of similarities with an avoidant too, right? And it's like, I've dated, I'm not gonna give names out, but I've dated women that are avoidant. So imagine having the anxious and the avoidant together. You got one person coming towards them and then one person running away. So it's like, it's, it's a, a it's shit a, show. It's a, <laughs> it's a fucking shit show. So it's like, if, but it doesn't mean that an anxious person and an avoidant person can't date. You just got to obviously right. work together and, and figure it out, but move into a secure attachment. But it's all interesting stuff, right? Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I mean, I, I will share that I'm more a disorganized um, attachment. And so it's been, you know, it's something to constantly work through. And I think you hit, hit a really important point, which is it's really about the relationship that we have to ourselves and healing that relationship with our inner child or our trauma or whatever it is, maybe from past relationships, insecurities, you know, and this idea that, right, like it's, it is about the internal relationship you have to your own emotions. And if you don't know how to regulate that, you are going to go to other people to soothe that for you. So, you know, and if you're anxious, you're going to constantly want validation from your partner. Why aren't they saying that they're going to stay forever and that they don't love, you know, and you, the key is really figuring out how to soothe that within yourself because you're not going to be able to control other people. And it's so important to be able to get grounded and secure in yourself. And you can move up the scale of, you know, anxious, avoidant, it's uh, disorganized to attached, you know, it's not, these aren't fixed things, but it's, it takes so much self-awareness and so much fucking communication right. in relationships to be able to be seen for what's happening, you know, and admitting like, Hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what it feels like when mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z happens. And can you show up in this way for me? Yeah. Cause this would be really helpful, you know? And that's, so communication is really everything. And no one should have to do your work. You know, totally. I think, I think it's like, we, 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 I mean, it, it, you don't want your, th- your, uh, your partner to become your therapist. I always say oh. that. And I think there's been 100%. times where, where my partner had to feel that way. And it's like, no, she doesn't deserve to feel that way. She shouldn't have to do my work. Right. And, um, and that's why I, I always say it's important to pull back and take the time to really heal and get healthy and be self-aware. Like you said, before you go back into a relationship, one of the things I think an anxious person does is the independence is not there. And that's one thing I've learned for myself being alone is really discovering me and feeling good about myself. And what comes with that is like the energy you have. And I wanted to get into the energy stuff with you. I wanted to touch on that because I think our energy can affect other people. And we have to be aware of that and really take care of ourselves and, and really nurture ourselves and be connected within us. So what do you think about that? Talk to me about the energy stuff we were talking about. I, well, I love that you touched on like building the relationship with yourself. Cause I think that ultimately that is everything because it allows you to, to better understand what your needs are. You know, like I think so many people who are unaware of their attachment styles or whatever it is, just don't, they, if they don't have that self-awareness, they fall into the same patterns over and over again. They're like, why is this relationship failing me? Or why am I in this same situation? So I think, um, you know, cultivating that 
that really strong and healthier relationship with yourself is so important. And when it comes to um, energy and like the idea of there's, there's this idea with boundaries um, of like energy leakage and in relationships, sometimes you, you feel the sense of responsibility, even relationships with friends, it's all relationships in general, but you give, you give, you give, or you become someone's therapist and you're absorbing and you're absorbing and all of it ends up dysregulating your own inner world. It's like, you need to be able to preserve your energy and your, it's like a bubble. You keep yourself in a nice little bubble. You show up for other people, but when your cup is empty, it's fucking impossible to show up for anyone around you. So I think being weary and aware of that is really, really important. Yeah. And we, and we talked about that, how like, you know, you and I are very capable of understanding people, wanting to listen to them in our relationships, friendships, family members. Right. And um, there's only so much you can give. Right. You Completely. have to take care of yourself. And, uh, I, and go ahead. Yeah, no. And I think I mean, it falls into the people pleasers. It's like yep. this idea that we can't say what we need. It's like of a friend's calling you and venting and you're already stressed about your own shit. Like we're all trying to keep ourselves above water a lot of times. And so this idea that other people have like a right to our energy and our advice and all these things is, I think we need to, it, there needs to be a shift in that perspective, but it starts with you and being able to get comfortable enough to be like, I love you so much, but I can't really talk right now. I'm, I'm really just, I barely have the capacity for myself, right. but I love you and I'm here for you. Let's schedule a time next week. You know right. what I mean? And I know that veers off into boundaries, but I think they, they all intertwine. No, I agree with you. And I think that the, when we feel like shit and we depend on other people to make us feel good, we have to be self-aware of that. Okay, maybe I should spend more time with my therapist and talk to her about it because that's her, that's her job is to talk totally. you through it and help you through it. But also, if you don't feel good, you have anxiety, you have depression, you feel like shit, go take, to go take care of it. Go meditate. Go do a cold plunge. Go do yoga. Get outside. Connect with nature. There's all sorts of things you can do to take care of yourself. Sometimes you have to have that one-on-one -on -one with you. And you have to, t you have to give yourself those reaffirmations. I am, I am worthy. I am worthy of being loved. I am worthy of giving love. I am, I'm, you know, you just have to constantly take care of yourself because no one else can do it. Right. Yeah. That's so, so true. And I think it's something I've noticed in my own life that, you know, it's hard when you're struggling with your mental health, you start to, and you're in therapy, like, right. Like I've been in therapy for a long time and I, know myself like the back of my hand my family dynamics all of that but sometimes on the other end of it it's like it can be all consuming and you can become so entrenched in this like self-awareness and my problems and identifying and over identification and so I think that that there's a fine line with it is like okay can I be aware of my attachment style my mental health struggles but can I continue to like you said be functioning in the world and find the practices that that work well with me and can actually help me make changes instead of just sitting and wallowing in the feelings and the problems that we're experiencing. So I think that that's so true is just really finding what works for you. Love that. I love that. Hey, I want to move into, I mean, you kind of brought this up, but it's about controlling a situation or a person and knowing not to do that and to only know that things are out of our control and all we can control is ourselves. How important is it to let go of things that, you know, you want to just control or fix or, or whatever? Because I, I think I've had many conversations with people at these communities and telling me that, oh, they just wanted to fix their partner or their family member just doesn't get them and they just want them to figure it out. It's like this fantasy they have in their head of like trying to make them someone that they're not. How, really? how important is it to just let things be, ride the wave, yeah. let, you know, go with the flow? You know, it's so important. And I think, I think when you're a fixer or you're someone who like, I know I've entered relationships, you know, and really focusing on helping the other person. And I think it's this weird thing where we get value in relationships by fixing the other person's problem, because by seeing them as broken, it, it maybe makes us feel good in order to, to help. But at the end of the day, it's also when that happens, you're leaving yourself and your own you're not focusing on on taking care of yourself and figuring your shit out. So you almost resort to helping other people and becoming this fixer. Um, and I think that that it's not necessarily the healthiest dynamic. I think it's so important to recognize 
to stay in your lane of focusing on yourself because you can't make someone love themselves. You can't make someone, you know, not have whatever issue they have. Mm -hmm. You really, you don't have that agency or control. Everyone has free will. And so right. being there to support someone, but also knowing that like you can't control and letting go of that attachment is so important. Right. And I think it's that, doesn't it stem from like a, an anxious attachment style? Like where maybe you didn't get that, you didn't get that comfort and love and nurturing, you know, thing from your, maybe your parent or, or whatever. Yeah, totally. And then yeah. it sort of translates into you giving that to other people and right. giving them everything that you needed. We're, we're always, every relationship in our life is a mirror for ourselves. And I think when you can look at it in that way, it's super interesting because you're actually able to see yourself for what you need to work on rather than blaming and shaming and, and projecting you're you're like oh wow i'm realizing that i'm a fixer which means i likely have shit to work on <laughs> with myself you know yeah i've seen that with myself too in in relationships is that when i see my partner have anxiety or if they feel low or down like i always like want to fix it and especially in the moment too it's like no 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 you can't do that you step back you can comfort you can you can be there to listen and support them but you can't do the work and neither can so, the person do my work. I already said completely. that, right? Right. Yeah, completely. And I also think it's one other thing on that is like, it's, you're taking away from someone's own ability to navigate and figure out their life and like the agency that they, they have to, to grow and heal and be on their own journey. Like by trying to fix or help someone and relieve all their issues. Like, I mean, that's the dynamic <laughs> with my family and, and my dad. It's, he's, it's like he's dedicated his whole life to make sure his kids are in the best possible situation. They don't want them. He doesn't want us to feel pain and sadness and all these things, but it's sort of left, left us in this place where we're like, what the, what are we fucking capable of? It's like, I, there's a part of me that is like, I want to fall on my face because I want to be able to get myself back up. And that's how you build self-trust. It's like making promises, you know, or self-confidence. It's like making promises to yourself that you keep or, moving through things that might be hard and, and seeing, you know, you got yourself through. And so I think in relationships, when we try and fix all the time, it doesn't allow someone to be on their own journey. I love that. I talked about that last episode with Nick Thompson about integrity, mm -hmm. how you say you're going to do something to build trust and you follow through. That is so important. You know, so important. It and it's a struggle. Go ahead. It's a struggle for oh, so yeah. many of us. Yeah. You know? It it really is. And I think that comes going back to boundaries. I think that's an important thing too, is to respect those boundaries and to know that that is a want and need. That's something that, that your, their partner's values, you have to respect it. Right. I think it's like something I've learned over time is, you know, making sure that you're aligned with that. Cause I never want any of my partners to feel triggered or to overstep a boundary. And I've learned from that over time. It's so important. Completely. And I think it starts with getting so clear on what your boundaries are and what your needs are. And that circles back to the relationship that you have with yourself that so many people neglect because we put so much value in the relationships that we have with other people and, and wanting that to fill us up when you really need to think about the fact that you're going to be with you your entire life and, and for you to fill your cup and be able to know yourself that makes your relationships just that much more healthier and fruitful and, and just abundant. And it takes, it takes that self-awareness and that self-work, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I think a part of that with the boundaries is good communication because what I've learned is that like, I never want to make my partner feel like I'm setting rules on her. It's more the fact that this is just how I do things and it's, it's for everyone and not just her. And, you want to be able to make sure it's a comfortable conversation because when people communicate boundaries, it can come off a little maybe aggressive or, or totally. something different, right? Would you agree with and that? I think that, no, completely. And you touched on something that was interesting. It's like, it's something I learned about boundaries is it's not about them. It's about you. Because I think so often when you like are a people pleaser or you, you know, in whatever relationships that you're in, you don't, you never want to hurt your partner or your friend or make them feel like you said it's this harsh like rule that if you break it like you're fucking in trouble and that's not the goal but ultimately it's so important for you to be able to say what you need and release the guilt it's like in any given situation because so often we 
we feel guilty. We're like, oh, like our friends gonna be mad at us that we can't come. But deep down, like you really don't want to fucking go. So are you gonna go? Are you gonna abandon yourself to make the other person to relieve their, you know, their feelings? Like there's a give and a take, you know, especially in relationships. But I yeah. think that it's just really important to be able to differentiate like I'm not going to abandon myself in order to make someone else's, you know, someone else feel better about my decision. Right. No, that's so true. We've all been through that. Totally. I mean, it's like, yeah, I feel like it's like the story of my life and so many relationships. And it's taken me so, so long to get comfortable enough and get grounded enough in who I am to be able to say what I need and not attach this story and this drama of what the person's going to think and how they're going to feel. They're going to likely, if you're setting a boundary, they're not going to be fucking, it's not going to be butterflies and rainbows. Like there, people aren't used to you setting boundaries. They're used to probably having no boundaries. And so right. it takes, it takes time and it takes doing it over and over again to, to continue to feel comfortable doing it. And then the person in the relationship knows that you're going to be able to communicate clearly what your needs are. And that's ultimately so much healthier. Yeah. And it can't just be one person. Two people can set boundaries. It's not just one. Totally. Right. Totally. Uh, one thing I want to bring up is uh, feelings and emotions. I think uh, I've been talking about that a lot. Um, it's, it's one of the biggest struggles for society, I think, you know, and especially oh, men, God. especially men, Nat. Um, what's your thoughts on all that? Just like with, with people struggling with it and uh, how's your experience been? with it too okay first of all validating the not just men thing because the amount of men that reach out to me like i i've created this community so far for women and there we're talking about our feelings we're connecting you know weekly reflecting on our week all these things and it's been this beautiful thing and the amount of men that are like like reaching out i you know wanting support is insane and it's a problem in and of itself that it's a neglected <laughs> gender so the fact that you are speaking on behalf and, and mm -hmm. shedding light on these i think is yeah. incredible um i think feelings and emotions are scary for a lot of people to feel they become so overwhelming and and we become all consumed by them i know for me you know the last few years of really working through a lot of this stuff like I've had so many feelings and emotions throughout the day. It's like one hour you're fine. One hour you're fucking spiraling and <laughs> having an existential crisis. And I think it's about seeing them as emotions and feelings and feeling into your body and allowing them to move through you instead of trying to figure them out and figuring out why you're feeling this way. And that's, you got to feel it to heal it. I know that's like cringy, but it's so true. It's just allowing the emotions to flow through you because they're always going to come up. It's true. And I think that's the hardest part is that, you know, when people start feeling like a, a smidge of it, they're like, oh my God, let's get to the bar. Let's go. We're totally. going to go have some drinks. When, when's happy hour? <laughs> I got to get rid of this feeling. It's like, no, no, no. Sit your fucking ass down and you feel no, those emotions right now. <laughs> it's so fucking, no, it's fun. like, I'm literally, it's so true. And, you know, for me, when I touched on like the eating disorder, like that was that was a way of soothing. It's like everything in our life, no matter what addiction it is to going to the bars and blacking out to, you know, binging on food to working to just being someone who focuses on is a workaholic. And we, it's an, it's a coping mechanism. It's a way to numb and not feel what we're feeling. And I think that that's why, why so many people struggle and are you know having our time is because they're not willing to go there and feel the discomfort of the emotions they feel they have a sliver of that and then like you said they run off and they cope and i just think that it's it takes a lot of courage to look inward and to make the commitment to yourself to be like i'm going to feel uncomfortable and it's going to be you know overwhelming but i'm going to sit with it and breathe into it and be with it and I might fuck up. I might go, you know, to the bar one day and I might yeah. go do whatever one day. There's no, like this, it's not linear. I always think of it as like an upward spiral, but you're always moving forward. Even if it feels like there's moments where you dip back into old coping, coping ways or whatever it is, you know? That's why it's so important to be connected with yourself, you know, like totally. to really do the work. And, um, I've learned that it's like, it's so important to do the work and there's so many different ways to really connect with your inner peace and understand yourself therapy 
We've already talked okay. about it. But hey, listen, I really want to touch on one more thing. I never brought this up to you beforehand, but um, it's the ego. You know, I really, oh <laughs> I think the ego really gets in the way of uh, some, some relationships, whatever type of relationship you have. And I think it, it, what it does is it prevents you from being vulnerable, it prevents you from laying your guard down, prevents you from being open. And that's mm-hmm. something I, I, I really wanted to talk about. I haven't talked about it yet. I want to see your thoughts on all that. Yeah, I love, I'm like the ego, we love her. No, she, I think that it's, <laughs> it's such a, yeah, it's such a real, a real struggle because our ego is the part of ourselves that we a lot of times identify with. But we don't realize that it's, it's not us. It comes up in whether it's relationships or whatever it is. It's like our, it's our shadow. It's the part that wants to prove to you that you're the most successful. You're the best, you're needed, you're wanted, you're all these things, but it's, it's like what protects us from going beneath the to vulnerability. It protects us from going deeper and being seen. It's this part of ourselves for me, like I'm a Taurus. I'm like a stubborn bitch sometimes. And I'm <laughs> stubborn because, but then when you yeah. peel it back and I slow down and I'm like, Natalie, like allow yourself to be seen right now and allow yourself to have a different perspective, you know, in relationships, mm-hmm. allowing your partner to share a perspective with you and being open to hearing it instead of just being so stuck in your ways. And I think it's like a societal issue. Like we are all in living in the extremes and we're so afraid, we're so tunnel vision. We're unable to see different opinions, different, all these things because our ego takes over. It's like, God forbid we're wrong, you know? And I think that that's really limiting. It's really limiting for us in life. Yeah. I think it has to do with like the fear of like being hurt and rejected too. Totally. Right. I mean, we all go through that. I mean, I mean, I think, and that's like a universal, it's like with everything I, I was listening to, I'm like, I'm, I'm talking about Mel Robbins a ton because she just, her she, wisdom really like sits with me, but yeah, as she was talking about like self-confidence and how we're always like, Oh, how do you be more confident as if it's like a personality trait, but it's, she says self-confidence is just your willingness to try and to start things and to do things. And I think the ego always prevents us from that. It's like, unless we're, you know, Joe Rogan, like then we shouldn't podcast. It's like, no, like, fuck that. That's not a thing. It's like Mm -hmm. you, he started somewhere, right? Like everyone starts somewhere and it just, it takes letting down your guard, letting go of your attachment to your ego and your fears and your fear of rejection and just, continuing to move forward and try things. Mel Robbins is the goat. I really think she's, she's awesome. And I actually, I actually saw that segment of hers about confidence. And didn't they say that like courage comes first? Before? Yes, it was courage comes first and then confidence is built over time. And it's so true. And it's something that like, I've struggled with in my own life. Like I've, it's, I'm so, I commend you for doing this and for connecting mm-hmm. with amazing people and learning. Yeah. Like I've wanted to start a podcast for years, but I'm like, oh, there's how many, you know, it's such a saturated space and the stories and the shit you tell yourself. And it's just like, what is the point of that? Like, just try, you never know, you know? Yeah. And if I, if I ever had thought like just overthought the whole process of it, I would not be where I am today. Exactly. You know, you were talking, totally. No, you were talking earlier. You were talking about like the fear of rejection and all these things. And I just, I think it's like human just like want to belong. It's like a universal thing. And so the idea of, feeling rejected and feeling not good enough or not good at something it's that can overtake us and it it paralyzes you but at the end of the day like the only way to to do great things and to do Mm -hmm. big things is to actually start doing them and so yeah I I love that you said that about just starting yeah because when you're connected with yourself and you feel healthy you have a really good relationship with you you know what you bring to the table and if you get rejected great well, you missed out on a great opportunity on to the next, you know, it's Completely. like, it's feeling good about yourself. And, and I think like, I've learned that for myself too, is like, I'm not going to look for that ex- external validation, especially my relationships. They don't need to do my work. I'm going to do my Completely. work. I'm going to take care and of myself. I, and I think the idea of like, you know, really getting so comfortable in who you are is, is the key to everything. Because I think, you know, as someone like I'm, I'm not I'm not much of a partier and I feel like I'm in my twenties and I'm like, everyone's doing this. And I could go down that spiral of like, Oh my God, I don't, why is everyone doing that? I'm well, something's wrong with me. And it's like, 
the more comfortable I've gotten and who I am and I just don't, it doesn't make me feel good, but it doesn't mean there's anything fucking wrong with me. And I think that that's like yeah. in everything in your life, in all aspects, the more comfortable you can get with yourself, like you're doing, the less you care about the judgment of other people, about what they'll think about your podcast or yeah. for me, what they'll think about the TikTok that you post. It's like, you're doing it for you. And right. if it ends up benefiting other people, then that's, that is the cherry on top, you know? Yeah, I'm just all about uh, just a healthy lifestyle and I want to help all my listeners get there, you know, if they're struggling, okay. right? That's, a, that's very important to me. So coming down to the wire, I really want to understand, like, what, what do you want to do going forward? I think you've done an amazing job on TikTok helping these people. You've gained a pretty big following doing it. And I mean, you're making a difference in people's lives. What would you like to do going forward with uh, all the mental health thank stuff? You. Yeah, thank you. That means so much. I... I am in the process of just continuing to build community at the center of everything. Like I said before, my intention is not to really, like it wasn't to be an influencer. It's really to be more so of a thought leader, someone who speaks on behalf of these conversations and these topics that maybe we're too afraid or too taboo to have. And I really want to serve the community and bring them their resources and, you know, the advice and the experts that can help answer their questions and show up for them. And at the core of it, I want them to have each other to, to walk through life because I think we don't have to do it alone. Yeah. And I think it's like being that example to make it contagious for them to open up and maybe do the same thing and want to help other people make that domino effect for the world, people to just heal completely and i think that that's like that's probably what you're realizing with podcasts as well and that's like the art of human connection is like vulnerability breeds more vulnerability like the second someone opens up about something they're experiencing maybe the person next to them that never yeah. thought they would open up about it does because they can relate and they feel less alone so i think that that's like so powerful and that's what i really want to create for for everyone but more specifically this demographic of of navigating your 20s and beyond it's powerful and like the amount of people i've already met that have listened to the podcast um have opened up to me which they're not normally used to doing and i'm like if i can make that impact for them to like tell me about their story and like you don't you just don't know what people have gone through i'll that look at them such... and I'll be like you went wow you went through that oh my god that's like that wild. is such a good point no it's yeah. fucking crazy Every to help single, people I open up all the time yeah. And every single, you look out your window, every single person on the street has thoughts going through their head. They have a story they've been through. You have no yeah. idea. And like, that's what I think is just, it's so interesting and yeah. everyone deserves and kind of wants to be seen. And I think we just need to create like a world and a space where people feel comfortable enough to, to be open. And you're doing that in such an amazing way. So I'm, I feel honored to be, <laughs> to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, we both are. And I'm proud of you for everything you've done. Thank you know, you. Thank you, ins you. you inspired me when I watched your videos. I was like, she's killing it. You're I the love best. it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, in conclusion, I want to say, you know, like I said, you're doing great things for your community, the world, and you're going to continue to. And um, I just love that you found the courage to just find a way to talk about the things you're going through day to day. And other people are looking at you and being like, well, I can relate. And thank you. It's a simple thank you. And uh, it's just something that really inspires me to do what I do too. You know, when I see that. And uh, I mean so much. And I feel I genuinely, the feeling is so mutual. Like I, I think what you're doing is incredible. And I've enjoyed every single podcast that I've listened yeah. to. And I just, the Aww. more people that are willing to show up as themselves, the, the better yeah. off we all are, you know? That's right. That's uh, that's where we want to be. So I appreciate you so much and uh, thanks for jumping on. It means a lot. Of course, of course. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk know. to you soon. Yep. Bye.